should we rebuild our headquarters in the publishing house? She said the Lord had shown her they should be on the east coast. Her message was, get out of Battle Creek. When the leaders naturally thought of New York City, Ellen received another message. Consider Washington, D.C. After looking the area over, the brethren found a little country village near the capital name, Tacoma Park. Soon, the General Conference headquarters and the Review and Herald publishing buildings were built on the edge of Tacoma Park. Ellen White also saw that we must have a college near the new headquarters. The General Conference leaders crossed Sligo Creek into Maryland and purchased 50 acres of land. Here they built WNC and now named Columbia Union College. No longer on 50 acres of land, I'm afraid. Definitely a concrete jungle. Thousands of youth will go to that college to become workers for God. Today, I don't know. In 1907, at the urging of Ellen White, the Washington Sanitarium was built. Now the work in the Washington DC area was well established. During this time of obvious victories, the church was once again threatened by error. This time through the subtleties of pantheism. Dr. J. H. Kellogg confused the personality of God with the power of God. This philosophy appeared in his book, The Living Temple. Kellogg was warned time after time to refrain from his teachings, but he refused. A.T. Jones, I believe, was, was a genius of one of our pioneers. He was given a call to come to Washington, D.C. But he was also asked by the request of Dr. Kellogg to come to Battle Creek. Sister White warned him, counseled him, do not go to Battle Creek. What did A.T. Jones do? He went to Battle Creek. What happened to A.T. Jones? He eventually left the church. This is what happens. We go against the council, we're going to get into trouble. And we're told that the work of Kellogg was the bringing about of the Alpha of Apostasy. And one of the other things that came about with Kellogg was a rejection of the health message. Because Kellogg was so intimately into the health, they got rid of Kellogg, they said we want nothing to do with health. But that was a great mistake and a great loss to the church. Ellen White's warning messages from her home in Alvesheim regarding these strange new teachings are now found in the testimonies and in the ministry of healing. Already in her 80s, Ellen White now led out in a new frontier. While in Australia, she was shown in vision that we would secure properties in Southern California for reasonable prices. In these places, we should begin rural sanitariums. The first such institution was the Pot Sanitarium near San Diego. Ellen White herself borrowed $2,000 with another $2,000 from her sister Gotzian and paid for this institution. Because the conference would not put money into the work, she put her own money in, bought the land, bought the sanitarium and said to the church, here, run it. This later became the Paradise Valley Hospital. Sister White's clear, we were to have sanitariums, places where people can come and learn about natural remedies, places where people can come for healing and rest. The council was not to build hospitals. Our council was not to go into drugs and drug therapy. And now we find ourselves that we don't have sanitariums anymore. We have hospitals. And what do we find with our hospitals? The majority of them are bankrupt. Mm -hmm. And what do we find with those that are just about surviving? We're in league with the Catholics. The Catholics are now taking over our hospitals and running our Adventist hospitals. That was not the plan that God had for us. Next, Ellen White encouraged the purchase of the Glendale Hotel at a fraction of its cost. Today, what do we have? Hospital. But this was only the beginning. Near Redlands at Loma Linda, a sanitarium was for sale worth $140,000. It was being offered for only $80,000. But the local conference, with only 1,100 members, was already $40,000 in debt. 
Allen continued to encourage the purchase of the property, and when it was re-offered for only $40,000, Elder J. A. Burden arranged to buy it. He put his own money to, to secure as a deposit. And after strong appeals, the brethren rallied behind him. Loma Linda, Loma Linda was initially resisted by the conference. It was accepted by the local conference, but was always resisted by the general conference. But Ellen White, she pushed and pushed and pushed. You see, when God gives you a message, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to sit down, or are you going to push and push and push? Here Ellen White stood and declared that these were the very buildings God had shown him in vision and that someday soon physicians will be trained at this institution. You see, Loma Linda, it was called, do you know, you know what it was originally called? The College of Medical Evangelists. What's a medical evangelist? It's an evangelist that does medical work. This was the purpose of Loma Linda, to train medical evangelists. And, and through the dialogue, she, she, had, she had, along with Jay Burton, they had this dream that we will be so advanced in this work that we will be a classified, we have a classified qualification all by ourselves. At that time, uh, I think it was the um, chiropractors or the osteopaths, it was, one of, it was one of those, they were fighting for their rights. At the same time, you had the American Medical Association, and they were saying to the government that all medical institutions should become a member of the American Medical Association. The chiropractors and the osteopaths, they were saying, we want to have our own association. And they pressed and pressed it so that they became a recognized institute, separate to the American Medical Association. And this was the vision that some had with Loma Linda, that we would have our own class of association. But unfortunately, do you know what happened to Loma Linda? They decided to join the American Medical Association and step by step by step, it no longer called the College of Medical Evangelists, it became Loma Linda University. As a result, a lot more money had to be spent on there, drug therapy, and also you could no longer have um, restricted Adventist personnel. It had to be open up to, to any member of the public, uh, any qualified member. The other thing also was to, to, to get on the course for Loma Linda, you had to have an accredited education. So originally you had Loma Linda, you had the College of Medical Evangelists, so that all our young people could train up and go to this college to become medical evangelists. Then it joins the American Medical Association, where they say, any people joining this college, they have to have accredited qualification. So all the Adventist schools that were not accredited with the state, one by one, had to become accredited with the state so they could then send their graduates to Loma Linda. And we got ourselves into a spiraling mess. Today, we are no longer churning out medical evangelists. Yes, it's Loma Linda's famous, it's got doctors and nurses, but are they medical evangelists? Another important step in the development of a medical and educational program was the clinical hospital. Again, we were not instructed to have hospitals. This was named in honor of the Whites, the White Memorial Hospital. We thought, what we'll do, we'll do something we're not really supposed to do, and we'll do it in honor of James White. That's, that's good, isn't it? Here, for many years, medical students from Loma Linda completed their medical studies. Endeavouring to meet the need for the development of wholesome, healthful food, Loma Linda Foods was begun in 1905, thus joining dozens of other vegetarian food plants all over the world. Today, what has happened to Loma Linda Foods? Like every other Adventist health foods, we don't own it anymore. We don't own Loma Linda Foods anymore. We don't own Granos anymore. We don't own Worthington Foods anymore. Sold. I remember one person's telling us, he says, you know, a lot of these um, vegetarian foods you'd call image to the beast. Because you'd have the beast and then you have all these artificial.